Thank you for staying with us. Um, that was a very, very touchy story, Uti. I, I really can't even explain how I feel right now. But I think um, it's important that we keep on reminding ourselves, you know, so when we understand why this even erupted in the first place, maybe when we try to now start to get upset based on um, all the other happenings, it will, it will keep us calm to understand, you know, this, yes, is a distraction. And, you know, this was the reason we even went to the, to the streets in the first place. But you wanted to say something before we went on the break, after Uju um, finished talking. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to ask if the panel, so we know that one of the things that um, the governors have um, uh, been asked to do is to set up these panels that will allow um, certain members, including youth representatives, um, each panelist to have youth representatives on the panel. Um, I believe it's either one or two representatives on each panel to hear these cases um, and to be able to um, you know, verify the claims, hear from all parties, and be able to recommend, um, you know, what should be done in those cases, whether it be prosecution. And I know some in some states the panels have already sat. So, you know, Uju was sharing with us that the, the panel has been set up, even though she doesn't know who the youth representative is on the panel, um, but that they have been asked to come and present their case on, the, on November 2nd. So we'll be following up on that uh, with that case to see how um, Uju and her family are faring in the, in the case of justice for her brother. For us, it's just one, we can't do, and I loved what you said in the beginning when you said that it seemed like we're doing too much too soon. You know, yeah. at some point, it's like the onion peel. You must take it one layer at a time. You must understand that there are certain things that are piled up because this is not a day um, decay. It is years, you know, so it took years to get to where we are today. It's going to take years for us to come out from where we are. But what we can do is that we can take it one step at a time, you know, as opposed to just doing everything all at once. I'm happy she said they set up the panel. But you see, that ultimatum of 2nd of November, giving them such short time, I don't know how they will be able to. So the, gov the governor of that state might have to review that deadline. You at some point, I mean, people think these things happened eight years ago. So you cannot expect that they just come and in immediately they have everything like, you know, I mean, they're not applying for a visa, right? Yeah. This yeah. Was eight years ago, they didn't see it happening. So they have to go back. They have to now go sit with their lawyers and see how they can gather the, the, the information yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 it and present it to the government. So putting a deadline to that thing, I don't think it is fair for any state government that is listening. You know, yeah, let's I, think, I think that um, it's important. Okay. Um, there's, uh, there's also, um, so for me, there's, there's the need for urgency. Maybe 2nd of November is too short, but we also don't want to lose traction in that we need to see, we need to see feedback. We need to see that these things are happening. We need to see change. And I mean, that's one of the things for me that I held on to last week that I was saying, look, I don't believe the gov government is moving fast enough in terms of how they were acknowledging the movement in terms of the actions that they were taking. Only very few state governors from what I could see were really communicating. And that's where I would like us to start. That failure of communication has created so much. You know, one thing that I, I spoke about last week was the Nigerian identity. Who are we as Nigerians? We have seen it play out in the looting, in the vandalization. As a people, as a nation, we are made up of people. And who are those people? What is our identity? There is so much distrust amongst Nigerians. Now, I was having this conversation and someone said to me, oh, but you know, all these issues. The truth is, over the years, we have been divided along religious lines. We have been divided along ethnic lines, along political lines. So many things that have been designed and when you go to the genesis of it, like you said, when you peel back an onion, you keep going. Where's this coming from? Where's this coming from? This is that divide and discord that some have used to rule us. A small percentage, what was it you said? 5% controlling 95? Absolutely. Have used to create this narrative. And some of us, shockingly for me, when we say these things, 
we expect that it will be at the level of those who are looting. It will be at the level of the illiterate. But the reality is that I've spoken to people, people who I respect, people who I value their opinion. And I was shocked at the base level what I saw this week. That when it boils down to it, we are fundamentally still Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, Christian, Muslim. It is strong in us. And how we are going to break it, I don't know. But let's not even move away because I think that it was even that coming away from trying to put too many things in. Remember when we said it was five for five? Mm. Then all of a sudden it became seven demands and there was reform for, um, for education, there was reform for health, there was reform in salaries, so much. And there's only so much you can do. You have to come to the table. If we had followed NSARS all the way through, and we got changes, credible, valid changes. We started to see stories of justice. We started to see stories of police officers being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. First of all, all the other police units, because let's not forget that SARS is just one arm of the police. And whilst we are mm -hmm. focused on SARS, we have all experienced some sort of issues Charlie. with the police force in general. Mm -hmm. They would have been forced to sit up because they would see what their counterparts were facing. We would have seen reforms and changes that way, even just behavioral. But what has happened is we've now lost that completely. I saw, you know, last night in the midst of all the humor, because I mean, when you don't have any other emotion to give, what do you do? You laugh so that you, you don't go fight. crazy. You laugh. So in the midst of all that laughing, somebody said, I just want to ask a question. Please, have we ended that? And mm. I thought that's a very valid question. When NASA that's asked that, it's a very valid question. Have we indeed ended SARS? Because so much has happened now. It's almost like we've, there's now so much noise. There's so much fear. There's so much anxiety. There's so much sadness over the death and destruction. Have we ended SARS? That's the big question, Uti. That's a very big question. Uh, let me take some comments um, then while you take yours. Um, someone says, that's from Benton, says, love the five-point request made at the onset of the protest. Uh, is it possible to itemize another five-point list, uh, list of, uh, another five-point list of activities that will guide the next phase to include learning from, from our mistakes, follow through with justice on all fronts, healing. Number four is, um, how can youth be mobilized to help in rebuilding in the damage damages done by the hoodlums. And he asked that what is the way forward now by the youth? Very important at, that there is no void. Um, Uti, you had a, a question or a comment. Um, so, so I'll just take this comment. It says, good evening, ladies. NSAS protesters are genuine. They have been protesting for almost two weeks without any weapon. All they had on them were Nigerian flags. President Kill Harry is a vampire with his team. They organized these thugs and Nigerian armies to create mayhem. This same hooligans they use during election campaigns. We want new breeds, not same old cargoes without ideas. And that is from Adi. So, so Adi, I agree. Yeah, you <laughs> I agree with certain part of this comment. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that, yes, there was peaceful protest. Um, I believe that, yes, they only had flags and they didn't have weapons. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I saw during the protest, and even me, I was a victim of it. There was a lot of oppression. There was a lot of backlash. You were not allowed to have a contrary opinion. You were mm -hmm. only required to Sorosuke. Mm -hmm. So the reality of it for me is, whilst we were protesting, whilst we had the flag, whilst we had a valid movement and a valid protest, what we failed to do was to think that everybody was on the same page as we were. Mm. People had different agendas. People had different things they were looking to get from this. Mm -hmm. And the gaps that were not plugged were then taken advantage of. So we first mm. of all started to see the, the violence that, that erupted at Alausa with the, the thugs trying to attack the protesters. And yeah. you know it was almost like a snowball effect. We were watching a movie unfold. Like, how did we get here? The genuine protesters are like, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. I'm sure some people are thinking, 
people like Obiano Ju would be thinking, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. From wanting justice to getting to this point. Now to take the other part of his, of his um, point that says we want new breed, not old cargo. That is the agenda we shouldn't be fueling. Now, I agree with you that change is good, right? Mm -hmm. But in 2015, we all shouted, change, change, change. change. Well, how will we assess that change five years down the line? Mm -hmm. So it's not always just about change. When we finished the show on Sunday, I remember I had a long rant. And it was because of the comment about the YDP. And I mm -hmm. said, let us be careful not to jump, to take frying pan for fire and say that we want to know exactly. We want change. Yes, we want change, but we must be clear in defining how we want change. Mm -hmm. Youth, this generation have a lot to give, but I don't want us to also assume that youthfulness automatically means that we will get the right change we are looking for. Absolutely. I think you should. Let me take a comment from Dan. It says, um, good evening, ladies. I appreciate you guys. Obianuju's story is very pathetic. But I have to say this, I think there are many reasons for the protest. Hunger in the land is another reason for people being on the streets. So I don't think it's just about SARS. Even the police need good reforms too. I have been assaulted several times, that's what he means, by police officers. So you need to hear from a number of people. I go with Obiano Ju's advice to talk to hoodlums and make them see reason for a peaceful protest. It is for the good of everyone. That's from Dan. Thank you, Dan, for your comment. Then let me take another comment before I come to you, Uti. Um, um, Benson is saying again, I strongly recommend that the youth are mobilized to be involved in the cleaning and restoration of the damages carried out. Well, I agree with you, Anna. There's a flyer going around that says people should come out with their brooms and their buckets and all of that because we cause the mess. We must take responsibility. And I don't like the fact that when hoodlums started vandalizing everywhere, we're not saying they are hoodlums, they are thugs, they are not the protesters. We cannot separate ourselves. The funny thing is that we are all the youth. When they I all like, came out for the protest. I'm they not, all I'm came not, out for the protest. They just yes. were protesting in a different way. They all came out from the protest. I am not separating myself from them. We are all mm -hmm. one and the same. So now it's not because when we were protesting peacefully, we are one. Now when people are being causing mayhem, we are not separating now. No, we are not part of them. Because I got a lot of backlash when I did a video and posted it this, this morning, this afternoon, because I got overwhelmed. I posted a video and people were backlashing and saying that, no, the young people, they are different from this. They are, they are not us. They are not this. But when we were protesting, we were one. When we were protesting, we were all together. We were the youth. Now there is vandalism, there's, there's thuggery, there's crime, there's, um, what's it called, theft and all of that. You're not separating ourselves. No, you must take the good plus the bad. We are all one and the same. So Uti, in final words, so in let, so let me tell you, so let me tell you where my fight, my fight came in this morning. I saw that video and you know it was a very passionate call. I could see that you were emotional. But I said to someone, I said, how is it that overnight, and I don't know if you had the same experience, Uwa, what I started to see people say was, let's get our PVC, 2023, let's go, let's do this. And I thought to myself, where was that two weeks ago? Because the reality of it is, I mean, hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. This is the beauty of it. We can all now sit here and say, oh, this is what it should have been. But the reality of it is, protest will only do so, so much. And I remember I had this conversation where I said, are we going to protest all the way till February 18, 2023? What is the plan? Mm. It is always going to be that we take this institution from the inside. We understand the politics. This mm. gap that has been exploited by the hoodlums, by whoever it is you want to, to call it, whether it is us and them, it is we, it was a failure to understand that this peaceful protest could be hijacked. But let's not even focus on that. How do we move forward? Because a lot of Nigerians are left with that question. What is the way forward? That seems well, to be the question on everybody's mind. Conversation on, um, on Sunday, because this weekend is all about the protest and we're talking about it. Quickly, before we wrap up, I just want to take comments from 
Taiwo Ohuibo, he says, NSARS may have gone cold on the streets, but be assured it's a piece of the, it's a piece of the graveyard. The, the move is hotter in our minds and can never die. Lekki killing is a strong resolve to pursue brutality to a close. The protest will be done without having to close the road and harassing people. It will be better planned not to disturb the public peace until justice is done. I love this point, um, Taiwo. And I think those are part of the learning curves that we should, we should take. Then uh, Rosalind is saying one last comment. Ladies, remember that most of the protesters are graduates of the first F or first and master's degree holders, and they have no job. So the protesters are right, but the government must bring out those that killed the people at the Lekki Toll. Well, we will keep the conversations going. Tomorrow, Uti, we're talking about, is Nigeria worth dying for? And Sunday is our way forward. So we have a packed weekend to discuss this and find a way to, to, to have um, a direction. Because when we have a direction, I'm sure we'll not miss out on where we're going. So thank you, Uti. For doing this with me <laughs> all right so remember yeah you can watch the conversation um um at 3 p.m watch the repeat show at 3 p.m um tomorrow at 3 p.m it's been a very very insightful conversation and again i want to say thank you to obianuju for sharing her story we'll, we know we will follow through that story and find justice we have to find justice for obianuju now in case you missed um today's quote here it is again good governance depends on the ability to take responsibility by both the administration as well as the people. That's today's quote. So, I mean, everybody has their role to play. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m., hopefully in the studio, as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.